Hello guys and welcome to my last and final attempt to bring you guys a tax video that I promised like three weeks ago. So I'm having all kinds of issues with this. I don't understand why. I've, I've uploaded videos before, used my software to make a nice video, and haven't had any problems. And all of a sudden, with this video, it's just not cooperating. And I, I filmed half this video the other day, and I actually put my TurboTax information on the screen, but it didn't record because there's a privacy thing, a privacy filter or something on the TurboTax software that wouldn't let me record it. So I'm going to have to do my best to kind of walk you guys through this without actually um, having that information directly in front of me. So, uh, we're just going to kind of talk through this real quick. We're going to, I'm going to kind of explain how it works and how you do things and where you file your stuff and et cetera, et cetera, and hope that it makes sense. So I'm just, I'm beyond frustrated with trying to make this video. And I promise you guys three weeks ago, and then I promise I'd have it out this week. So away we go. So guys, uh, tax time obviously is a stressful time for some people, uh, trying to figure out um, how you file taxes and, and how everything works and being an Uber and Lyft rideshare driver, you know, how does, how does it all play in? So um, the easiest way um, for me to explain this is uh, the first thing that you guys need to remember is that you're not employees. So what that means is you did you you did not and you will not receive a W two from either Uber or Lyft. Um, obviously, I'm saying you did not because you should have received all your tax documentation by now. I wanted to get this video out before that all came. It's either here or there. Anyway, uh, so you will receive you will receive some sort of documentation from Uber and Lyft. I've got Lyft up on my screen here because I want to show you the documentation that you're going to get from Lyft. And I'm going to try to show it to you for Uber. It's going to be a little bit more complicated. But, um, so essentially how it works is uh, you receive 1099s. Uber and Lyft send 1099s to their contractors as commercial as uh, independent contractors, you're a 1099, you're a 1099 worker. So um, let me just kind of jump into this. So uh, this is how you access it on Lyft, okay? You go in to your dashboard, okay? And once the dashboard pulls up, which hopefully it pulls up relatively quick, I'm still at a 5.0, oh yeah. Uh, then you go into tax information. Okay, now the, what this will do is this will pull up all of your information here. So, uh, um, I'll get back into this in a minute. So, uh, you can see here, 1099K, um, I, they're not sending me one because I did not make $20,000 or more in ride payments. Okay, now important thing to remember about the ride payments is it's the entire fare, which includes all the fees that you don't get paid. So when it says twenty thousand dollars, okay, if if you have on record that you made uh, nineteen thousand, you probably made over twenty because it's gonna it adds in all the fees and everything that they take out. So if you don't make twenty thousand dollars or more in ride payments, you do not receive a ten ninety nine k. 1099 miscellaneous is uh, 600 if you receive $600 or more in non ride payments. So, this is like Quest. Uh, this would be, um, I guess, the lift, it would be like a street bonus because you don't, I mean, you have to give a ride to get it, but it's not real, it's not a ride payment. So, like street bonuses or referral bonuses, anything like that, if you get any of those and it's $600 or more, you receive a 1099 miscellaneous. Regardless of whether or not you qualify for 1099K or 1099 miscellaneous, you will receive a summary. Okay, I'm gonna download it again. I already have it saved on my phone, but 
Uh, so this is a 2018 summary. And everybody receives one of these. Everybody will get one from Lyft and you also get one from Uber. So what this details, okay, you can clearly see on here, guys. It tells you how many rides you gave. Okay? It also tells you how many miles you logged while you were online. The important thing to remember about this is this is the number of miles that you logged from the time you got a ping until the time you dropped somebody off. Okay? What it does not include is any time that you spent driving around waiting for a ping. That is not included. That is where you would use your... Um, your individual mileage tracker okay then it also tells you your ride payments which for me was 81 81 11 95 and your non-ride payments which was 174.57 um so non-ride payments would be uh any referral bonuses or streak bonuses that i received so um and then it has all your expenses so this is all the stuff that they take out that we don't actually directly pay but it's all the stuff that comes out of your total fare, okay? So as you can see here, guys, they took out uh, quite a bit of money from what I actually made. So I made 81.11.95. That's the total that I made, includes all these fees that are down here, okay? Third-party fees, express pay fees, service fees, platform fees. So all of that's included. So that's what all this is. Okay, so all of this came out of that 81.11.95. So that's how much money Lyft kept from me um, in uh, 2018. It's actually really not that bad when you think about it, but it, some people would be a really big number. So, um, and then it explains what they all are down here. So, um, this is just uh, tips. So, that's what you receive from Lyft, okay? So um, I'm gonna try to get into the Uber one here. Um, I think it's a little bit more difficult to get into it. Let's see if I can find a quick way to pull it up here. Um, do, 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 do. No, I don't want destination filter. Do, 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 do. Hold on. Might be under documents. No, it's not. Eh, maybe it is. Nope. Um, doo -doo. Oh, that's not it. Hold on a second. All right, so uh, there's no real quick way to get into this, but basically you have to go into uh, if you go to Uber.com and sign in that way, that's the easiest way to pull it up. It's a pain in the ass. I had to jump through a whole bunch of loopholes to get in here, but once you're in here, so you're on the Uber Partner website. Uh, your tax information is what you click on. And this will bring up, again, as you can see here, um, you have a monthly summary for every month. Okay? And you have, a, so I have a yearly summary for 2017 and a yearly summary for 2018. So I'm going to go ahead and download 2018 so you can see what that one looks like. Download to view. It's going to give me shits again. Come on. Oh my God, hold on guys. Okay, so as it turns out, I have already saved this on my phone. So this is what this is what Uber looks like, okay? So something key to remember about Uber, all right? And this isn't that important, but uh, the tax ID number for Uber is in the top right corner of this document. So um, I'll talk about that in a minute, but um, they make theirs easily accessible. Lyft does not. Uh, it's a pain in the ass. But again, this does the same thing. So it tells me how many trips I took, 923 trips, uh, 8,000 miles. Again, that's from ping to drop off, nothing in between. Okay? And then this is how much I made. So I made 99.70. And that's how much they took out in fees. So um, the actual amount that I got was 6,400. That's what I actually received from Uber in 2018. But that's what I actually made, 99.70. So um, they took out about a third for taxes. So, um, or for expenses. So again, same thing here. 
Um, and then the second page gives you kind of a more detailed. Uh, you guys all should have seen this already. You guys should have looked at this already. I'm just kind of trying to... Um, go through it real quick um, kind of break it down for you so um, and then this yeah this just breaks down where all your fees were from again the second page also has a, the uber text ID number on it so um, going back to um, the tax information if I can find it again um, God damn it. Hold on, guys. This is not working in my favor. So both Uber and Lyft offer the services of TurboTax. Okay, and I'm trying to trying to get it to pull up here. It's just being actually. You know what? I have it already saved on here because I was going to use it in my video that ended up not panning out for me. So let's uh, let's find it. That was going to be right here. So, uh, Uber and Lyft are offering the same deal. You can get it through either one. Uh, this one shows the actual Uber, uh, but it's the same exact deal on Lyft. So, if you use TurboTax self-employed online, you can get it for free. Okay? This is a $90 value. Okay? You can do TurboTax Live, which basically gives you a live person to help you through your taxes. Uh, 50% off. I believe this is a $200 fee normally. So you're going to get it for 100 Okay. They also offer you savings on Hewitt Jackson. It says up to 150 bucks. I think it all depends on, on uh, how everything goes. So um, there's codes available for that as well. So um, I use TurboTax, obviously. I think it's a great software program. Um, I've used it the last few years. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. It walks you through everything. Okay, so um, I really want to show you the TurboTax software and where to enter everything in, but it's being really stubborn and it won't let me. So I'm going to try to describe it the best that you can, the best that I can. So the first time you go on to the software, it's going to ask you a whole bunch of questions. Um, it's going to ask you if you have W-2 income. It's going to ask you if you have 1099 income. It's going to ask you if you have other self-employment income. Um, it's going to ask you a bunch of questions. So um, W-2 income, obviously, if you have a regular job outside of, of rideshare, uh, that would be pretty self-explanatory. You'd enter all that information in there. Okay. Um, the self the the other the self-employment income section is where you enter all of your Uber and Lyft information, and it's going to ask you to name it. So you want to name it, whatever you're going to name it. Um, I named it like rideshare driver or uh, something to that extent. So um, I always try to park away from people when I do these videos because I'm sitting here talking to myself and it looks weird. And then somebody pulls up right next to me. It's fucking weird as hell. Anyway, uh, so it's going to walk you through it. It's going to ask you what you want to call it. I named it rideshare driver. Um, and then it's going to ask you... Um, where the money came from and how much it was. Um, you want to enter the, to <coughs> the total amount that you made, <coughs> including the fees in that section. So in my case, I entered Uber and then I entered the 9970, right? And then I entered Lyft and I forget what the Lyft number was, but I entered that number in there. 8111, I think is what it was. So, um, that's what you enter in that section, okay? Um, then you're going to complete that all the way through. And then uh, there's a bunch of other lines for expenses, okay? There's one, f one that says vehicle. And um, vehicle is, it's going to ask you questions about your car. What year is it? What make is it? What, you know, how many miles? It's going to ask you how many miles you put on your car, okay? It wants total miles that you put on your car for the entire year. And then the next question it's going to ask you is how many of those miles were specifically for your ride share business? Okay. And this is where, um, I usually look at, I, I, I will look at my yearly summaries for Uber and for Lyft. And I will, um, also compare that to my mileage tracker. Now, what I found doing this this year 
is that I was really bad in 2018 with keeping track of my mileage and making sure I turned that mileage tracker on because Uber and Lyft together had more mileage tracked than my mileage tracker had. So that's one thing I got to be better at in 2019 is making sure that I'm tracking the miles every time I'm driving, every time I'm on app. Um, but I add the Uber and the Lyft together because remember, you're not you're you're running both apps at the same time, but you're not running both apps with rides at the same time. So you can easily add those two together. Now in my case, I added those two together and I added a couple thousand miles, um, just because I know that I drove more than what was listed. I just don't have documentation. Um, I mean, I have documentation, but you, you know, you, you know what I mean. Um, I can't prove that that's the number, uh, but I didn't want to go too high. So um, that's where you enter all that information. Um, and then you hit done with that, and then it's going to take you through other categories. There's communication in there. Uh, you can write off your cell phone. Um, and then there's, you go all the way down to the bottom of that section, and there's a miscellaneous expense section. And when you click on this, uh, it will say right in there, that this is where you write off Lyft commissions. This is where you write off your Uber service fees. This is where you write off all those expenses that Uber and Lyft had listed under the expense section. That goes in this section, okay? So uh, now remember, all the stuff that I'm telling you is only if you didn't qualify for 1099. So, um, so you're going to enter all that information in. Um, and this is also where like I put my insurance, right? I, the car insurance that I'm writing off or the registration, if you want to put that in there. Um, I actually get that question. Any, I think you get that question anyway. Maybe it's only Iowa, but, um, they ask us how much we paid registration for our car. We can write that off. That's a whole, whole different section. So, um, yeah, so that's where you enter all your information. Um, all your expenses. I wrote, like I said, I wrote like all my goodies, my car washes, um, my when I vacuumed out my car, um, and then obviously the Uber and the Lyft fees that were in there. Um, if I purchased any goodies, I wrote that off in this section. Um, so that's where you can write off all that stuff, right? When you're done with all that, it's going to calculate it for you. It's going to tell you based on the information that you entered, you get you know X number of dollars in a t in a tax deduction for your vehicle. So uh, for me, I think it was 86, I got 8,600. So um, now I also use rideshare with two different vehicles and I didn't <clears throat> separate my mileage. So I did everything under one vehicle. Makes it a little bit more difficult that way, um, but it was just easier for me. So, um, but you know, that's really it guys. There's not really much to it. Um, I, I don't wanna tell you to finagle the numbers, but it'll tell you at the end what your risk is of an audit. Um, I've always been low risk. Um, it's higher this year than it was last year, but it's still low risk. So um, you would think that rideshare drivers would be more susceptible to audits, but they're not. And I, I'm not sure why, but um, this really, and this is the second year I've done my taxes for Uber and Lyft. It really kind of opened up my eyes to um, being better about I gotta track this better, or I gotta I gotta watch this better, or you know I need to figure out how to track this better so I can get more accurate figures. The the software tells you not to guesstimate. It tells you not do not guesstimate uh, your numbers. And like it told me on mine, it says you have round numbers makes makes us think you're guesstimating. Don't don't guesstimate. So um, if, if you get that message, just finagle the number, you know, maybe it's that, like I put, them, I put my maestro fee in mine, right? Under the miscellaneous uh, expenses section, you can put maestro. If you pay for Pandora, you can put that in there. If you pay for Google Music, you can put that in there. Uh, if you pay for Apple Music, you can put that in there. Whatever you pay for music wise, you can write all that in there. So um, like I put a hundred bucks for maestro, I actually paid 94. So um, I could go in and change it to $94 and then it would, ra it would raise less red flags. If that makes sense. I think I put in like an even 50 bucks in goodies 
I don't know how much I actually spent. That just kind of seemed like a good number. Um, I put an even 600 for my cell phone. You know, um, if I actually sat down to the math, it's probably, you know, wouldn't be an exact number like that. So um, don't guesstimate. They don't like that. They, that, that raises too many flags. So, um, but uh, yeah, guys, uh, one final thing, and I know I mentioned the, the Uber tax ID number. Um, you do need to enter that for... Ooh, there's a little fucking mouse right there. Um, you do need to enter that for um, Uber for uh, TurboTax. They will not, absolutely will not um, allow you to submit your taxes without without the tax ID numbers for Uber and Lyft. Okay, so um, you have that Uber tax ID number. Uh, Lyft does not like to give theirs out, and if you call Lyft and you tell them you need the tax ID number, they will not give it to you. They will tell you you don't need it. So um, they're lying uh, because, well, it's probably true you don't really need it, but TurboTax will not let you submit it without it. So um, I will put the tax ID number in this video so you guys can uh, find that. I'll put the Uber one in there too, even though I think I made that pretty prevalent in the video, but... Um, I will, I will drop the Uber and the Lyft tax ID numbers in here somewhere. Um, and, uh, I think that'll do it guys. Um, once you get that submitted, you should have enough expenses to cancel out your, um, most rideshare drivers have enough expenses to cancel out their income. So they actually get money back. So, uh, last year I got money back because of rideshare. This year, I switched jobs. It got a little dicey at the end. I'm actually paying in because of that. That's my fault. But um, you should get money back because of rideshare. Because most rideshare drivers have more write-offs in mileage than they actually made. Or similar, very similar. So, um, yeah, that'll do it, guys. Uh, I'm very sorry this is long-winded. I'm also extremely sorry that it's late. I really didn't want to do it this way. I'm really frustrated by the whole thing. Um, but if you have any questions, guys, please reach out to me. Uh, my, my information is below. Um, my email, my, my Zello username. Um, obviously, I always answer YouTube comments as well. So, um, thanks, guys. Uh, I think that'll do it for today. Um, like um, and subscribe if you're new. Smack that uh, notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And uh, take it easy, guys. Uber Lyft on. Be safe out there. Enjoy your tax refunds because you will get some. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.